Hello, Bond fans! Ernst Stavro Blofeld is quite simply the most iconic villain in all of cinema. And I don't think that's hyperbole on my part. I mean, the bald head, the scar, the cat, the megalomaniac schemes. As far as supervillains go, Blofeld, or at least certain portrayals of him, are totally ingrained in the minds of film fans everywhere. Obviously, Donald Pleasance is the most iconic, but does that mean he's the best? Well, not necessarily. That's what we're going to be looking at today as we rate and rank every screen incarnation of Blofeld in the Bond series. Starting with... Number seven. So I don't normally include the unofficial movies in these countdowns, but Max von Sydow is such a great, iconic actor that I couldn't pass up an opportunity to talk about the absolute waste of talent that is his appearance in Never Say Never Again. Blofeld is such a non-entity in this film, it's bizarre that they would cast an actor who I can't imagine would come cheap to play the part and then not really do anything with him. I guess the intention would have been to get him back you know, for future films in this alternate Bond universe, but as no such film was ever made, all we're left with is this. There's just nothing here, nothing in the performance gives any sense of character. There's no menace, no nothing. It's such a shame and such a waste of a brilliant actor. Number six. Oh yes, we're really counting down every Blofeld portrayal in this series. The villain's final appearance in the uh, series' first timeline, the first official timeline, was something of a disappointment because of a load of legal hullabaloo that led to the inclusion of Blofeld in Never Say Never Again. It also meant that the official series couldn't use him, by name at least. So technically this guy might not even be Blofeld, and maybe he doesn't even belong on this list. Uh, who knows, maybe in future, you know, I'll do a list for, you know, top ten bald, cat-stroking, wheelchair-bound, delicatessen-loving villains, and, um, you know, He'd probably come out on top. But this is so obviously meant to be Blofeld, and I guess it was good of the official series to wrap him up after, well, Diamonds Are Forever. It's just a shame that it was so unceremonious, and also sporting one of the most bizarre lines of dialogue of the whole series. I buy you a delicatessen in stainless steel! I mean, I'm sure that the delicatessen would have been lovely, but I don't quite know what Bond would have done with it. Was it Blofeld's plan to distract Bond with the delicatessen in the hopes that maybe he'd, you know, become a butcher and give up the secret agent life? Number five. Okay, here we go, into the proper Blofelds now, with the most recent actor to portray the supervillain, Christoph Waltz. The man you're talking to now, the man inside your head, is Ernst Stoffel Blofeld. Okay, a little bit of insight here. Um, the whole reason it took me so long to actually get around to doing a top 10 um, Best Bond Villains video, and indeed this Blofeld ranking video, is because that when Spectre was announced, you know, and Christoph Waltz was announced as being in the cast, um, it was pretty obvious um, to most people that uh, Blofeld would probably appear in some capacity of the film, and Christoph Waltz is a great actor. I love Christoph Waltz, by the way, like Inglorious Bastards is one of my absolute favourite films, and he's amazing in it. Um, I, 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 a part of me kind of wished that a different character had been revealed as Blofeld just because I thought that the casting of Waltz was so obvious, uh, even though they obviously said, no, he, no, he's not Blofeld, he'll be Oberhauser, but, you know, uh, I, I hate those kind of smoke and mirrors um, techniques that they try to do with castings in a lot of films. Like, I'd rather they just openly said, yeah, Waltz is going to be Blofeld, but that's beside the point because it was obvious either way, and... Around that time, I thought, well, I can't do my top 10 villains list just yet because Waltz is going to be Blofeld and he's probably going to be the best damn Blofeld there is and that'll shoot Blofeld right up to the very top of my top 10 best Bond villains. Surely, right? So you can imagine how disappointed I was leaving the cinema after seeing Spectre and realising that after all these years we got a very boring one-note performance. I can't emphasize one note enough here. There is no variation to this performance. Waltz goes for the quiet, soft-spoken menace, but that only works when you feel like there's an extra level to the personality that could snap and do terrible things if pushed, like Waltz's character in Inglorious Bastards, for example. But no, even after acquiring a facial scar and having his entire one would expect rather expensive base blown up, uh, the next time he meets Bond, he's 
just as soft-spoken and quiet as he was the first time you met him. No, this is the moment where you take the performance to the next level and expose the unhinged, expose the crazy, expose the rawness. But no, I hate the whole adopted brother thing, but I'll talk more about that in an individual Spectre review, but I will say something else that I hated about this Blofeld was that they gave him this moment. Finish it. Finish it. I think it was at that point when I first watched Spectre that I realised this Blofeld was never going to be the Blofeld that I wanted. There were Joker comparisons made with Raoul Silver from Skyfall, but this moment reminded me more of the Dark Knight than anything in Skyfall. Finish it. That is just not Blofeld. Blofeld would desperately cling on to life until he physically couldn't anymore. He would beg and plead because he wouldn't want to die. Blofeld strives for power, wealth, destabilizing the world, or at least he used to. Spectre boiled down Blofeld's entire villainous motivations down to, well, daddy taught you to ski and not me, so now I'm going to dedicate my entire existence to pissing off this one guy, which apparently includes willing him to kill me because... why? Is it because he thought that Madeline wouldn't want to sleep with Bond? I mean, I, I don't really get what's at stake for Bond if he does kill Blofeld at the end of Spectre. I would have thought Madeline would happily see the man killed, and surely Bond wouldn't be arrested for killing such a mad megalomaniac. Eh, whatever. Plenty of room for improvement when the character next appears, and you know, he will. I'm sure that Blofeld will appear in future Bond movies. He certainly left it open for a, a, a reappearance, um, whether or not he's played by Waltz. Number four. Telly Savalas is very much the most physical uh, Blofeld. As far as I'm aware, it was decided to recast the role and not bring back Donald Pleasance because a more active role was to be required of the villain in Majesty's Secret Service, and so Savalas was brought on board, and indeed, as much as I may love Pleasance, it would be hard to imagine him being much of a match for Bond, be it skiing or duking it out on a speeding bobsled. Savalas' performance has really grown on me over the years. He has a certain kind of physical strength and physical menace that is kind of unique to him, and I don't think any of the Blofeld has that. He could, and does, kick Bond's ass, and while I've heard some put him down for looking more like a heavy, more like a, you know, East End bouncer, um, more like a henchman than a leader of a world crime syndicate, and indeed he's about as mafia as Blofeld has ever been, but I, I think it suits the film he's in really well. The main downfall for me with him is, and I'm aware this is quite superficial, but the accent. I just can't get behind an American accented Blofeld. It feels we it feels weird. Blofeld should have some kind of vague European accent. He should be unidentifiable with regards to nationality and he should be stateless basically and giving him this kind of specific accent does bother me, but then the same can be said of my next choice too. Number 3. Good evening, Mr. Bob. If you ever needed to know that this list was completely subjective to my opinion, then look no further than Charles... Just a jump to the left! Grey appearing so highly in this ranking. I'll admit, he's kind of a terrible Blofeld, if I'm being objective. There's very little menace. Physically, he's no contest for Bond, and you never really get the idea that he's completely unhinged and mental. So, why is he so high on this list? Well, I'll tell you why. Camp value. Quite simply, he's the funny Blofeld. He's witty, he's charming, he has this great, smooth delivery. It's like as close as we'll ever get to a, a James Bond villain played by Oscar Wilde. I love this actor, and that does play into my fondness for his Blofeld a great deal. He's such a hoot to watch, even if it is pretty jaw-dropping to see Blofeld drag up as a woman. I'm delighted to meet you, Miss Case. I'd so dreaded the prospect of making this tedious journey alone. I have never really heard or read anything to suggest why, out of all the actors out there, that Charles... Just a jump to the left! Grey was sought after for Blofeld. The actor had already appeared in the series in a memorable role a couple of films ago, and he looks nothing like the other two actors to have played the part, so... Pff, 
I don't know, was he good friends with the producers or something? If anyone has any information on this, I'd love to know. I'd love to understand more about why this guy was deemed to be, you know, the one to cast. It's like, yeah, Donald Pleasant, Sully Savalas. Oh, yes, of course. That guy, that Charles. Just a jump to the left. Grey guy is the one we must cast next. Like, what? I'll just finish by saying that my favourite moment from this Blofeld is just how quick he is to jump ship when things go tits up. He has a go at Metz for panicking and tells him to get back to work, and then he immediately has his escape pod readied and leaves. And yeah, that's amazing because that's exactly how Blofeld should behave. He's too smart to hang around and wait for Bond to jump in and egg him on with finish it. No, 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 this is how Blofeld should behave. Yes, Charles Gray, the most underrated Blofeld in my opinion. Number two. I am Ernst Stavro Blofeld. They told me you were assassinated in Hong Kong. Yes, this is my second life. You only live twice, Mr. Bond. Yes, the one we all probably think of when we hear Blofeld. Heck, the one we all probably think of when we have to think of a Bond villain off the top of our heads. Yes, Donald Pleasance is the quintessential supervillain. Now, I love Donald Pleasance. He's one of those actors where I don't think I actively seek out his work, but whenever I'm watching a movie and his name pops up somewhere in the opening credits, I know there's going to be at least one element of joy in the film. Much like Christopher Lee, I don't think I've ever seen a bad performance from Donald Pleasance, despite him being in a whole load of bad movies. What more can I say about this guy's Blofeld that hasn't already been said? I mean, the scar, the bald head, the soft voice with weird inflections. Donald Pleasant's created an icon of a character here, and all under very last-minute circumstances, it seems, after Czech actor Jan Werick was let go from the role while filming was underway. Apparently, the scar came about as Pleasant was experimenting with various physical deformities, like hunchbacks and limps and, and, and whatnot. Um, because I guess cherub-faced Pleasant's without... Scar or any kind of horrific deformity wouldn't be anywhere near as frightening. More than the scar, though, there's something just so weird and piercing and dead eyed about his gaze that I just love. His reveal is absolutely fantastic. Looking straight at the camera, straight at Bond, straight at the audience after years of waiting, audiences finally got a, a good up close look at Blofeld with his face, you know, 20 foot high on the silver screen. But is that as effective as not seeing him at all? Well, that's certainly my mode of thinking. Number one. Yes, the best Blofeld is actually two men, in my opinion. Anthony Dawson's physicality and Eric Bowman's fantastic, deep, menacing voice. I guess this is one of those typical, like, you, you know, whatever you can make up in your own imagination is gonna be a hell of a lot more interesting than whatever you can be shown on screen. Um, and in this case, it really is the, the case. Rewatching all the Blofeld films recently, I was struck by how much of a menacing presence this guy has when he's shrouded in mystery, shrouded in the shadows like this. Apart from hands and a figure on a chair, we don't see anything of this guy, and it's brilliant. He can be whatever you want to be. Chances are the image I have in my head is completely different to yours, and yours is completely different to anyone else's. I know that these things ha you know, can't be shrouded in mystery forever, and in these situations you have to show the monster eventually, but sometimes the tease of a meal, the odd you know, nibble at the side, is more fun and satisfying than the entire dish. I think the only downside to this particular version of Blofeld is that he just wasn't in enough films. Like, I just wish we'd had one more film in the series where he was a presence and we didn't see him. Maybe Bond would get close, but had to wait until the next film of the full reveal, or, you know, or at least I could have done with more of him in Thunderball, at, you know, at the very least. But his appearance in From Russia With Love is just wonderful. Uh, and, you know, I, I think in large part thanks to Lottie Lenya, who plays Rosa Klebb, she is so absolutely petrified of this guy that it conveys so much to us. She's sweating and stuttering when she thinks she's going to get the blame for the failure of the mission, and it, it makes Blofeld terrifying. She sells it so well. It would have been interesting if they'd have tried to match Dawson's physicality and Pullman's voice when they finally revealed Blofeld in You and Live Twice. Obviously, they didn't have short, bald Donald Pleasance in mind at the time when they, you know, started using the character, but it would have been interesting to see if, you know, in a parallel dimension somewhere, another version of Blofeld would have become so synonymous with the film series. Maybe one with hair. 
And that's it for this time, Bond fans. So, um, what did you think? Is my ranking anything like yours? It's always very interesting to know, so please leave your own rankings in the comment section below. And, um, until next time, Bond fans, so long for now.